Hey guys and welcome to a new video here on Flowshop. My name is Joseph. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a retouching walkthrough of this particular image. I had a lot of good feedback on this image. People loved the color, people loved everything about it from the way we shot this. So if you haven't seen the behind the scenes of how I got the shot, I'm going to put a link in the card right here. Click on it, watch it before watching this video. Before I start as well, a lot of you guys were asking for raw files to practice with and i have been really thinking about that and then i've also been wanting to find a way to um, get the community involved so i started a patreon and the link is below if you want to support the channel this is the best way to do it and also i feel that um, i can communicate more with you through my patreon page what i have decided to do is to have two membership levels so the first one is keep the fire burning basically and that one is three dollars a month where um, you're just showing support or contributing to the community so that we can create a lot more content for you guys the second membership level is called love for us and what i plan to do with this uh, membership level is to keep updating it with fresh images as I shoot them on my YouTube channel So anytime I do a YouTube behind the scenes I'm gonna put some of the raw files in here for you guys to practice with I'm also going to be doing some editing tutorials and putting it just inside the patreon page But at least I know that every week or two you guys are going to get fresh images to work with and for seven dollars a month i think that is really really cool and so if you guys really want to have your hands on fresh raw files every week or two this is the membership level for you i'm also going to be thinking of other things that i can do to make the community a little bit more exciting but for now i'm starting with these two so if you just want to contribute say thank you to me for putting out all these free tutorials on youtube then just go with the fire burning that is three dollars per month or if you want to have access to the raw files to practice with every week or two then just go with the love for raw files currently i have two files um, in there and I'm just going to add after this tutorial I'm going to add the raw files from the session so I'm going to add the raw files of this image um, these two right here actually and you guys can also follow along or practice with and tag me on Instagram when you do and then we can just keep the community growing so click the link below um, it's going to take you to my patreon page and then you can subscribe or join the community over there and we can keep the community growing like i said initially all right so let's just jump right into what we're doing today so starting off with adobe bridge um these are the images that i narrowed down to but my final selections were these three and i decided to edit um the last two but this was my favorite image um, from everything that we shot on that day i really loved everything about it the hair her eyes um a hand position everything was just perfect all right so starting off inside camera raw i have these two files in here this is what i edited but this is like a completely raw file i just wanted to show you guys where i started from and the adjustments i made you can see i've warmed it up a lot i've increased the reds in it and then did a final color grading in photoshop which i'm going to jump into but for now i just want to show you guys the adjustments that i made inside of camera raw so on the left which is the very raw file um you can see the white balance let me just change it to a shot and you can see it really didn't change anything um exposure everything is flat and you can see looking at the histogram all the information is pushed towards the left so coming on to what i've edited you can see i increased the exposure to plus two and i also warmed the temperature plus the tint a little bit just so i can get rid of the green so if i just quickly reset that you can see um, it was at 5350 and plus 17 and then i took it up all the way to about 36 and also increased this to about 5600 and that was what i used for the temperature and tint now the exposure i like i said already i increased it by 0.7 and the contrast also plus five and i brought down the highlights a lot so if i take it back to zero this is how it was and i just brought it down because i wanted to retain a lot more information in the highlights and the shadows also um it was down here like that and i just boosted it a little bit just so i have a little bit more information in the shadow area and then i darkened the black so it was looking a little bit flat even though i opened the shadows but i just wanted to keep like the darkest parts in the image a little bit darker so i brought the blacks down 
now the next thing i also did was uh, just boost the vibrance a little bit just so the very dull colors in the frame will be boosted a little bit and then i dropped the saturation down because i didn't want them to be over saturated after that i came down to the color mixer tab and i'm gonna run through everything that i did from the hue and saturation and the luminance so starting off with the hue i changed the oranges towards the red a little bit to the right you can see it still looks like it has some amount of green in there and i wanted to get rid of the green so i moved that towards the oranges just a tiny bit and then i did the same thing to the yellows i wanted to get rid of the greens in the yellows so i moved that to the left if i move it to the right you can see it's looking more golden which is kind of okay if that's what you're looking for but i just wanted everything to sort of like blending i didn't want to have a lot of variations between the background the textured leaves that we put in the background and then also the difference in the accessories that she has so just moving all those towards yellow just you can see already um sort of unifies the differences in the hue right so here you can see the differences in the background you can see the differences in the in the leaves you can see some greens in there you can see yellows in there you can see that hair wrist accessory also it's a little bit faded um the <laughs> the diy scares with me here where as well it's also a little bit different but when i move that to the left you can see that everything just unifies and that's what i wanted to do with the yellow slider in the greens as well if i just move it up a little bit you can see that it's just a little bit in the leaves and i just brought it down towards the yellow part again just making sure that we're skewing all the colors towards one look and feel i didn't touch aquas blues purples magentas and i just came uh, straight down to the calibration so with the calibration i also again increase it to plus three so i can get rid of any green tints and then i also increase the hue of the red primary so if i move it to the left you can see it looks a little bit pinkish and i wanted to get like a warm tone so i just moved it um, like plus three and then also saturated the new color that i have introduced into the red primary a little bit i went into the greens and then i just wanted it to move again away if i move to the left you can see it's looking more yellow and golden to the right it looks more red and i wanted to have more red in the image so i just moved it plus three or four just a little nudge and then also increase the saturation a tiny bit now inside the blue primary i just brought it down a little bit and also decrease the saturation of that and all those things together uh brings me inside um says cancel all changes yes <laughs> so all those changes just bring me right here inside photoshop so this was the base inputs that i brought into photoshop and we're going to walk through all of the changes that i made all right, the first thing that I always like to do with my images is to do healing. So inside the healing folder, I have two different layers and I just like to work separately sometimes because maybe I'm trying something out and it may not work. I don't want to have to delete the whole uh, layer that contains all the healing I've done. So I like to do um, probably like the first part that I'm sure of. And if there's something I'm not too certain of, I do create a new layer and work on that. If it works, I can merge it. If not, I just keep it and group it like I did in this uh, scenario so just i'm going to zoom into the image a little bit and hide um, the first layer so you can see i've removed a lot of um, blemishes on her chest area before and after including some of the stray hair that came down this is really basic i'm just trying to clean up the image and make it look a little bit cleaner and also her face as well i just removed some of the blemishes as well the second layer was just another level of cleaning so i used the healing brush again to remove some of the spots on her nose and her chin area and then i also use the clone stamp tool to sample if you can see right here before it had this patchy highlights on there and i just wanted to get rid of it smoothing is a little bit so i just use a clone stamp tool to fill that in so i sampled a good area like that and then dragged it up so that's all that i did inside of the healing um, group and the next thing i'm going to do is tackle frequency separation so inside frequency separation this is where a lot of the skin smoothing happened but i'm going to open the layers and also show you exactly what i did so opening the frequency separation layer um, i have uh, setting layers in there so i'm going to start off with the low layer but i'm just going to make everything visible so with the low layer you can see this is where majority of 
the changes occurred you can see that i have smoothing her skin a lot and i was even beginning to lose some of the skin texture but i didn't really mind looking at how smooth it was getting because i knew in the end i was going to put a noise layer and also increase the texture contrast in the image or i call the pop you see that when we get there but for now you can see that i've smoothing the skin a lot if i go to her face area and zoom in a little bit you can see before and after before after everything is just looking a little bit more polished and this was a little bit too strong in my opinion so for now i think i'm just gonna bring that down a little bit i didn't do anything on the brush layer i'm also working on a frequency separation action i'm gonna give to you guys really soon so look out for that um, the next layer inside the frequency separation i didn't want to do this outside was i just created a blank layer and then filled the inside part of the lip a little bit this is just a paint brush i sampled the black and then just paint it inside to get rid of um, the parts where the lipstick didn't get to just to make it clean again so it's always these small things that you do that come together really nicely to make your images pop all right so the next step was to do dodge and burn and with this i wanted to add contrast and also increase the form of the um, subject in the image just to make it pop a little bit and also smoothing out some of the inconsistencies in the tonal variations right all right so the first one is the dodge and you can see with the dodge i did some cleaning like i got rid of some dark patches on her arm and her legs and her, sh her arm i think i already mentioned arm and her face so just zooming into the face it wasn't really so much you know just a little bit of touch up to you know just make everything look smooth and even so with the dodge that is where i think i added a lot more structure um, by adding or boosting the contrast in the image so you can see her eyes and eyebrows and certain areas on her face needed a little bit of darkening so you need to really train your eye when you're doing dodge and burn because it's always just the smallest things that you need to do to increase um, the overall contrast and um, smoothness in your images it's not always that you need to do so much all right so looking at all these things together that is the dodge and bend this is what i have so let me zoom in. let me fit the screen and before and after before after all right now the next thing i did was to do a pop and that pop you can see is boosting the contrast a lot it's increasing the highlights it's darkening the shadows and it's making hair pop a lot more right so before after before after if i zoom to the face a little bit before after and let me just show you guys how i did that so i'm going to hide this temporarily so i created a new layer and i hit shift option command and e and what that did was it merged all of the layers below and put it on a brand new layer all right the next thing i did was to hit shift command and u to desaturate that image all right so everything on that layer you can see is desaturated everything below stays the same what i did next was i went to filter came down to other and then clicked on high pass the next thing i wanted to do was to figure out the radius that is you know good enough to show contrast in the image so if you go all the way you can use this technique to sharpen your images so if you go all the way you can see that the difference between the highlights and shadows are very 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 minute and so you can see it's making the texture pop a lot so this you can use to sharpen your image right but when you go all the way to like a larger number you begin to see the image and you begin to see a broader highlight and shadow ratio so you just need to find something that is going to you know boost the contrast exactly where you want it and what i was looking out for was looking at the subject here like this i wanted to see the highlights on the forehead her cheek chin you know certain areas where the highlights are already present and then the same for the shadows so where the shadows already exist i wanted to increase the contrast in there and somewhere around 97 was what worked for me so i'm just gonna keep it at 97 let me just type that in <laughs> and press ok so after doing this, the next thing I needed to do was to change the blending mode to soft light. And you can see that it's a really strong effect. If I just do it before and after, you can see that the shadows are very contrasty. The highlights are also very contrasty and it makes hair really, really pop. Now, all you need to do is to adjust the opacity to your liking. And for me, I think I did something around 37 or so. So before, 
after you can see it's just a little nudge but it goes a very long way to make your image pop all right i don't need this because i've already done it so i'm going to delete it and then just reactivate the pop that i made all right so after that like i said initially you can see that the skin was a little bit too smooth so i put on a noise layer and that's just made the image look a little bit more organic so you can see her skin i have the noise layer really uh adding a lot of you know organic feel to the image even with the face because i didn't want it to look too sharp and digital and this just made it soft and beautiful and i really really liked the way it looked all right the next thing i did was to do the color grading and this is where a lot of the change even in the highlights coloring the highlights and 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 the shadows and the overall tone of the image um went into play and like i told you guys in my story because a lot of you guys were asking how i color graded this image and i told you guys that i used my melanin skin tone actions so just in case you don't have access to my melanin skin tone actions i have one that is paid for and that's what i use actually in this uh, video i'm going to show you real quick but um, you can use the free skin tone lot and then you can use the melanin skin tone lot the free one just has just one file and it has just one thing but inside the melanin skin tone lot i have about six different skin tone lots that you can play with they all give you different effects i do recommend that you try because i use it now and it saves me a lot of time when i'm color grading my melanin skin tones so just uh look at it read about it download it and use it and it's really going to save you a lot of time when you're retouching melanin skin tones all right so i'm going to go back into photoshop and then i'm going to show you what i did so the first thing that i did right was if i hide everything so this is before the color grading i just used my skin tone light and you can see already we've moved the image to like the finishing point like this is even okay to use this is at 80 percent opacity at 100 percent, you can see it's really strong and to prove to you that it's my skin tone lats let me just double click and show you so you can see this is the file that is in there and it's the flozilla flozilla is my absolute favorite out of the lats i all of them give me a different feel but flozilla just has my heart and i think it's going to have your hearts as well guys so have a look at the skin tone lights um let me just once i'm here let me just go through my other lights so you guys can see how it's going to affect the image so i'm going to go into my lights and let's try the fade punch for example so opening up fade punch just gives you a different feel so this is before and this is after it's a little bit soft it's faded <laughs> just like the name right but it still adds a little bit of a punch to it so let's look at another one which is um fairly muted and you can see fairly muted also adds a ton of contrast so always when you're using the skin tone lights you don't need to keep them at 100 percent i made it very strong so that you can adjust the opacity to your liking so for example this thing somewhere around 42 percent just adds a little bit of that effect to the image 100 percent goes a very long way all right so let's look at the other lot um fire gold is just going to warm everything up even more so if that's the color scheme that you like in your images like you want a very golden tone you can go for the fire gold and it does amazing guys so before after you can see how it's unified all the different skin tones from her skin to the accessories everything just works well it's really golden this is also like a really nice feel i can stick with this but you guys have already seen the final image so i want to go back to that all right let's look at flamey as well so flamey gives another different vibe um it doesn't really work well for this you can see the separation i did with the blend if is really really strong so it's not the separation is not really smooth so it's not really working for me in this image um, again you always have to try different lights to find what works for you we already know how flows that looks like so let me just go to fury and show you oh this is also another really beautiful effect i really really love fury but let's just go back to Flozilla so you guys see exactly how it works. And you can see it's strong. It just brings out the melanin skin tone, makes it pop a lot. And it's quite strong. So I just brought it down to about 80%. So let me just time that in. 80%. Okay. The next thing I did was to add curves. And the melanin skin tone that I applied darkened the image. And I just wanted to brighten it up a bit. So I went into curves. And if I can show you, I just boosted the mid-tones and it's a bit of the highlight areas a little bit. So this is before the curve and when i just boosted this part you can see it's lifting up the shadows a little bit and i also open up a little bit more of the highlights you know just to add some contrast to it so 
yeah this is how it looked and i really really loved it the next thing i also did was to add a color balance targeting the darkest parts in the image because you can see we have a lot of warmth in the shadows and i didn't want that so inside the color balance you can see the mid-tones i have moved it towards like a cool a little bit so moved it towards cyan and also added some blue and a little bit of green in the mid-tones in the shadows again i also moved the rest towards cyan and added a little bit of green and i don't think i did anything in the highlights all right and i also added a layer mask just targeting um, the shadows the next thing i also did was to um, create another color balance targeting the highlights so in there i went into highlights and you can see i've moved that towards cyan i've added a bit of green and also added a lot of yellow and the yellow just makes it shine but gives it a yellow tint so this is without the yellow if i go blue you can see it's adding a lot more blue if i go like very yellow you can see the effect really really strongly and if this is like another direction that you're going for you can always go for this like i just wanted a hint of that yellow in there so something tiny like this and that is all that i did inside of the color balance if you want to know how i created this luminosity mask then let me just do that real quick i'm not going to do anything but to show you how to do that so i'm going to create a color balance adjustment layer and what I want to do is now go to image, come to apply image, layer set to merge, channel RGB, blending mode, that's the most important. It has to be on multiply. So you press OK and you can see that we've been able to get a layer mask. This is how it looks, just the black and white of the image on there. All right. Now you can see that I have edited this a little bit and what i did was because i wanted to target the shadows i hit command l which is going to bring up the levels and now i can adjust the contrast of the layer mask so all right just like that press ok and then hit command i to invert so this is how it looks below you can see so anywhere that is white is going to allow the color to show through anywhere that is black isn't going to allow the color to show through so what i did then was to create another color balance so let me create that all right so now i want to apply the layer mask onto another color balance layer so i'm going to create a new color balance layer and i'm going to drag that up press alt drag it up onto the new layer mask that you want to replace it's going to pop up and ask you do you want to replace that layer mask just say yes and it's going to apply that now it's the same mask what i want this one to target is the highlights all i'm going to do is hit command i and it's going to invert that layer mask all right okay so now we have two color balance layers if i go in here i know this part is going to affect the highlights right so let me just add rename it to h so we know it's highlights and this one to s so we know the shadows for example right so in here when i go into shadows i can start off even with the mid-tones and make adjustments and you can see it's targeting the shadow areas right just like that all right now i don't need that it was just for a demonstration so i'm going to delete it and the same thing with the highlights so if i go back into the color balance adjustments and go into also start with mid-tones you can see we can make adjustments and it's affecting the highlights right just like that and then when I go into highlights, I can make even further adjustments into the like the brightest parts of the image. All right, so I don't need that anymore. I just wanted to demonstrate how I created um, these layer masks for you guys to see. All right, so the next thing I did was just to add a gradient map. And with a gradient map, it's just another color I selected. I just wanted to add, you know, to adding just a little bit of um like a different it could be anything i could have used this rainbow color i just wanted like a different hue so if you're going to cancel that and retain this color scheme you can go with any color scheme that you want and i set it to soft light and set the opacity to three percent so it's almost not there but it's <laughs> it's present it definitely is doing something at three percent soft light it definitely is doing something all right so the next thing i did was to add vibrance and this is just you know raising the the hue in the image as a little bit uh desaturated and then just you know making it a little bit more vibrant or prominent in the image and this just brings us to the end of the color grading the next thing i did was just to create a new blank layer and i named it eye whites because i went in there and i just used my brush a normal brush tool and i painted white inside the eye whites just to get rid of some of the you know the darkening in there to make her eyes pop a little bit and yeah so this is everything that i did uh to this 
image in particular if you have any questions you can leave them in the comment box below if you want to again uh, support the channel you can go check out my patreon i have two different membership levels the first one is the fire burning where you just want to say uh thank you to me for creating the free content i create on youtube or if you just want to support me um, so that i can have uh, more videos coming out to you guys regularly uh, you can stick with the fire burning uh, membership level for three dollars every month or if you want to practice with some of my raw files like in this tutorial that we've done today i'm going to put two of those raw files inside you guys can download and play with them and tag me on instagram when you do for seven dollars a month and what i want to do with a love for raws membership level is anytime i shoot a behind the scenes content i'm going to put the raw files in here for you guys to have access to and practice with and that is seven dollars a month also if you want to get access to the melanin skin tone lads that i have used in this particular image to save time when you're color grading your melanin models then go for the melanin skin tone lads it has six different lads in there that give you six different effects i also have another set of practice files where you can download three different practice files and edit them and then send it back to me i'll give you feedback on them and create a custom video for you that video goes out to just you and that's going for 70 dollars i also have another tutorial an in-depth tutorial here where i use the clone stamp tool healing brush tool moving plates around everything just to create a clean backdrop so if i go inside the product you can see that this is the final image and this is what we started with you can see the background is really messy but we're able to clean it up i have a detailed tutorial inside this going for 30 dollars so if you want to learn how to use the clone stamp tool how to move your background plates how to clean up any messy background this tutorial is for you and i also have one generic raw file going out for free if you want to have access to some of my raw files to practice with so all these are available on my digital store i'm going to put a link down below you guys can check it out and download anything or buy anything to support the channel or simply stick with the patreon page i'm looking forward to your memberships and your contributions as i also contribute to youtube every single week all right I think that sums up today's tutorial uh, i hope you had more fun as i did in creating this and i'm gonna see you guys in the next video and remember don't ever give up i've got an itch i can't scratch i'm missing a piece that completes a whole part of me an open wound scar to see everybody come here gather round welcome to the freak show the best in town what the hell's wrong with me? I don't get along with anybody, honestly. I've been living in my own head constantly. Thoughts jumbled round, think I need a new lobotomy. Wait, all these thoughts are too negative. I don't wanna get lost in the sedative. Gotta show them what I got, I'm competitive. You know I'm about to go off, I won't let them win. I'll